Riley and welcome to the studio. Today I'm doing a quick craft challenge. I have been seeing these cars on the internet that are made out of Legos and balloons. And by trapping energy in the balloon when you blow it up and then releasing it, the balloon makes the car go. I have been wanting to make this for a long time and I'm so glad you're here to make it with me. Check it out. I think we should start with the wheels. We need the tires, some rims, and some axles. Let's choose these shorter ones for this. We'll put the rims in the tires. And then the tire on the axle. Perfect. Now I have two axles ready to go. What should we make the body of our car with? Let's just start with maybe this long green section, kind of flat. I'll attach my axles to the bottom. Cool. So, so far we have a pretty basic green car. I put some different things that have holes in them over here that will help hold the balloon in place. Just to get started, let's put one of these right on the back of the car without building anything else and blowing up a balloon just to see what we're dealing with. I'm gonna put this balloon right in the back through this window, which doesn't have any glass in it right now. We'll fill this up with air, and as the air comes out, it will push our car forward. That's the hope anyway. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. I'm holding the back, and now I'm gonna let the back of the balloon go so hopefully it'll push this car forward. Ready? One, two, three, go! It totally worked. And it went so far, it flew off the edge of my desk. Okay, now that we know this might work, let's build it up a little fancier and see if that works too. like windows on a long green bus? Maybe. Here we go, let's try this one. Because we added more blocks to this, now the car is going to be heavier. Do you think that will make the car go faster or slower? Let's see. Great. What did you notice about this car that was different than the first car that was just flat? It still went off the table, that's the same. It did go a little bit slower. And also, if you remember, at the very end, it started to turn. I wonder what would happen if we made our car wider, wider tires and a wider base. Let's make it. Right, I think this car looks cool. Time to put our balloon in. Time for its test run. Cool! It kind of did the same thing. A little bit slower than the first car because it's heavier, but a smaller curve. I have an idea. Welcome race fans! It's race day here at the Kylie Makes It studio and we are here to see which car is fastest and which car can go the farthest. Let's test farthest distance first. Let's start with team green yellow! The balloon is inflated at start 
Ready, set, go! Oh! Each car is going to get three tries. Try number one. Try number two, here we go! And go! Oh! Really about the same. Try number two. This is your last chance, green, yellow. Focus up! Ready, set, go! Okay, okay. That was not bad, at least you stayed up right. Try number three. Let's get our ruler out. On their first try, team green, yellow made it eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters. On try number two, they made it 25 centimeters or about 10 inches. And try number three was exactly the same. We're going to find the average of all three distances to find the average distance that the green and yellow car went. To do that, we're gonna add together all three tries and then divide by three. So eight and a half inches plus 10 plus 10 divided by three, 9.5 inches is the average distance of the green yellow car or 23 centimeters. All right, Team Red, let's do this. Three, two, one. Whoa, a little further. Try number one. Try number, whoa, my back came out. Ah, my car. Pit stop. Here. We go! Whoa! Try number two. Do you think we can get it to go even further on try number three? And go! Wow. Well, we can already see that red car way beat car yellow green for distance, but let's just measure and come up with averages anyway. The math is complete. And as we guessed, Team Red won by a lot when we were measuring how far the cars would go. The average distance for Team Red was 17 inches or 43 centimeters. Congratulations, Team Red! Woo! Coming in second place was Team Yellow Green with an average of 9.5 inches or 23 centimeters. Good job, good job. Admirable, admirable. Here's your trophy, Team Red. Now to measure how fast they can go. Since neither car can really make it all the way to our amazing finish line, we are going to time them to Yellow Green's shortest length. Who's gonna win, gonna win, gonna win? Who do you think? Only one way to find out. Let's go! On your marks, low, get set. Yellow went faster, red went further, but yellow would have reached it before red if it would have gone that far. I'm gonna give that one to yellow green. That's two out of three, which means yellow green wins first place for going the fastest. Woo! The crowd goes wild. Congratulations, red. That is nothing to be ashamed of. You went the furthest and you both are winners here today. What did we learn? Well, we learned a lot of things. We learned that when we made the car lighter, it went faster. But when the car was a little wider and heavier, it went further. This would be so fun for you to keep experimenting with at home. If you have Legos, kind of a basic set, you can make a lot of variations of these cars and see what works best for whatever you're trying to do. You might even be able to make a trick car. Who knows? You could use Legos to make ramps and they could go Whoa, flying. Oh, that would be so amazing. It's a basketball hoop. Look, it comes right back out. <gasps> comes out in the shoot Good job! Uh-oh. Yes. This is called an alley 
Alley-oop. Alley-oop. Oh, close. Let's try again. Ready? What if we put it up really high? Yeah. Oh, so good. Do you want to learn how to make one of these with me in my studio? Let's make it. Let's make it. All you need for this project is a cardboard box. This had soda in it, but you can use any shape or kind. I like this kind because the cardboard is a little thinner. So if you're using scissors, it's a lot easier to cut. I'm gonna be using yarn, but you could use any kind of string. Tape to decorate your box, but again, you don't need to do this. You could use paint or markers or whatever you have. Stickers, or you don't even need to decorate it. Maybe you just wanna to get to playing basketball. That's fine. You're gonna need some scissors and some sort of ball. If you don't have a basketball ping pong, that's fine. You can use any kind of little ball or you can even take a piece of paper and squish it up really small, maybe aluminum foil and throw that like a basketball. That'll work too. Awesome. Let's get started. First thing you need to do is cut a small square at the very top of your box. We made a little flap. Now we're gonna bend the flap down, just like this. See, now there's a little hole in our box and this is gonna become the rim of our basketball hoop. I'm now gonna cut this into a semicircle. Ta-da! Now I have a square hole and a semicircle for my rim. Now, in order for the basketball to go in, there needs to be a hole in the rim, doesn't there? So we're gonna cut another hole on the inside, but make sure that it stays connected to the box. Ta-da. Here it is. Wow. <laughs> we're going to make a special part of this basketball hoop. So if you miss, it doesn't get lost. When you miss with this basketball hoop, it's gonna come right back to you. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. We're gonna cut this flap off. So hold this flap up, and I'm gonna cut mine in a semicircle. See, now there's a place for the ball to get out. Now flip it over and cut the back about halfway up on both sides. Big flap. Now what we're gonna do is push this flap down so it makes a ramp on the inside of our box. Then I'm going to use my tape to secure this. When the ball goes in, it'll run down the ramp and straight out the bottom. Time to decorate. What do you think? It looks like a real basketball hoop already, doesn't it? But there's one more thing we can do to really make it look awesome, and that is add a net. This is the part where you need some string or yarn. Double it in the middle, and secure it around the hoop by going like this. I have the loop on top and the two strings on the bottom. Then I'm gonna take these two bottom strings bring them through the loop and pull them so they're tight, just like that. We're gonna do that six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we just have a basketball hoop with really long hair, so we need to tie our net together. This is how we're gonna tie our basketball net together with these strings. Take your middle three sections. Then spread 
out your strings. So that instead of three sections, you're looking at six strings. So one, two, three sections, but one, two, three, four, five, six strings. You're going to take strings two and three and tie them together. Now I'm going to take strings four and five and tie them together. Now you'll see that we have one, two, three, four, five sections of our net tied off. And you'll notice that there's two strings left over. They're not in any knots, but they are going to be this time. We're gonna start with this loose string and tie it together with one of the strings from this first section, just like we did with the other ones. And continue. Now you get to decide if you want to keep going and make your net even longer or if you want to stop. I'm going to stop, but maybe you want a longer net. Just keep doing the same thing all the way around, back and forth, until it's exactly as long as you want it. Now it's time to finish the net off because it still has all these danglies. What we're going to do is take our scissors and cut one string from each knot like this. Two strings, cut one off. I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna bring this string over to this knot and tie it. So this is the finished little loop on the bottom. I can go ahead and cut that string. Now I bring this string, bring it over to its neighbor and tie it on that side. And just continue that all the way around. And we're ready to play some basketball. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Kylie, and I'm so excited because everything is going perfectly today. You're here right on time, and I have a friend who's dropping off something amazing for us to do today. Do you have any guesses? You'll never guess, you'll never guess. They're dropping off an aquarium, and they said some, some old fish and things. I don't really know if the fish are old or, or what, but I think that it's going to be an aquarium we can put together with, with amazing seaweed and maybe one of those, uh, those pirate chests that bubbles up and then I wonder what their old fish look like. Oh my goodness, an aquarium, a whole house for fish. I can't wait to go see it. And did you hear that? That must be them now. This day is going perfectly. Let's go. Oh my goodness, I can't even wait. <gasps> Look how huge this is. Oh my goodness, this will be home to so many amazingly beautiful fish. Let's see what kind of fish my friend gave us. What? hairbrush, a car, an old jug of milk, chalk, a toy fish. I thought that my friend said that he was gonna leave fish and things, like, like real fish and like things that they would need, like fish food and aquarium decorations. And instead I get an old potato. This is really what I wanted to do with you today. No, we're not gonna let this stop our good time. Let's, let's bring this bag of stuff up to the studio and, and see if we can fishify it. Come on. I'm still not really sure how this miscommunication happened, but we're gonna make the best of it. A rooster? <sighs> okay, we have two real, well, pretend, but look like real fish. A shark and a whale. So we don't really need to do anything there. 
the rest of this, we're gonna need to figure something out. But you know what? Where there's hot glue, googly eyes, and imagination, there's hope. <laughs> Let's get crafting. actually a very cute little potato fish. Spoonfish. That one looks scary. Beware of the milkfish. This fish kind of matches my outfit. <laughs> Cute guy. Last but not least, a chicken. Chicken fish. <laughs> Still just kind of looks like a chicken. Got all our fish, ready to put them in the aquarium? We do. Let's go. Got my fish, got some water. Let's fill it up. Are you ready to put our fish in the tank? Me too. Who should we start with? Um, maybe Spoonfish. All right, Spoonfish, swim! Spoonfish? Spoonfish sunk. Huh. Okay, who's next? Uh, how about Ping Pong Fish? All right, Ping Pong Fish. Swim! Oh. Ping pong fish floats. Some things are going to sink and some things are going to float. The spoon is heavier than the water, so it sinks. But the ping pong is lighter than the water, so it stays on top. It floats. Let's see what else our fish do. Do you think carfish is going to sink or float? Sink is my guess. Dive. Oh, a float! Or a sink. It looks like his little fins are swimming. That's mostly a float. Okay, how about Chalkfish, sink or float? Let's see. Bloop. Floater. Let's see if my friends 
old toy fish sink or float? Ready? One, two, three! Sink! For fish, they are not very good swimmers. <laughs> uh, milkfish? Rawr, rawr, rawr. One, two, three! Oh, a float! Hairbrush fish, sink or float? What's your guess? Let's check it out. Let's go backwards this time. Three, two, one. <gasps> Another float. Now we've got my favorite, potato fish. <laughs> Do you think potato fish will sink or float? Hmm, I think it might sink. Let's check it out. Yep, potato fish sinks. And last but not least, little, little, little chicken fish. <laughs> I'm coming, guys! Whee! <gasps> chicken fish did a beautiful dive down, down, down to the bottom. Chicken fish is a sink. This was so fun! Did you guess most of them right? I think I guessed most of them would sink and they floated. <laughs> Uh, well, this isn't what I was expecting, but it's still fun. Let's go. for us today that's going to help us <sighs> calm down. Sometimes we just get so excited or we get scared and we just need help <sighs> taking a deep breath and remembering that we're safe and secure. So today we're going to make something called an I Spy Box that helps our brain <sighs> calm down. Are you ready? Let's make it. This is something that's fun to play with and cool to make, but it can also help us calm down when our thoughts in our head are just going like a racetrack. We're just thinking so fast and so much, it's hard to relax. The I Spy Box can give us something to focus on for a little while until we can calm down a little bit. Let me show you. Here's two that I made already. They're full of sand. You can bring them to a corner or your fort or your bed or somewhere you feel nice and safe and shake them until you start to see some different things. I see a red turtle and one, two, three green beads. In this box, I see a birthday candle. One, two, three orange beads, and some kind of creature. Oh, an orange seal. That's so fun. 
let me show you how to make this. First, you need some sort of container that's clear. Then you need some things to put in there. I'm going to put in some green beads and maybe some of these cool sea animal beads. Um, a whale, a pink turtle, and maybe a green seal. You can put other things in that you find around your house. Keys, birthday candles, paper clips, change, just little things that will fit in your box. The lighter the things are, the easier they'll be able to find when you shake your box. I'm gonna try some glitter in this box. And then I'm going to add sand. You could use sand from your sandbox if you want. I'm gonna use this white sand for this one. Fill your box until it's about three-fourths of the way full, not all the way to the top. Your objects need room to shake around. Where'd they all go? <laughs> we'll spy them in a minute. You need an adult's help for this part. Use hot glue or super glue to go all the way around the rim of your box so that it stays shut. Once your glue is on, shut your box. When your glue is dry, it's time to spy. Let's shake it and see what we can find. <gasps> what do you see? A blue whale, a green seal, a little bit of a turtle, and one, two, three, four, five green beads. Let's keep going. Whoa, I see a lot more green beads. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 green beads, can you believe it? Now we get to start again. How many beads do you see this time? It's good to make your I Spy box, maybe when you're not worried, just when you're having a great day, so that it's ready to go when you need a little help relaxing. Put it in a space that you feel safe and calm, so that next time you need a little bit of a break, you have something to look at and focus on, count and observe. Plus, it's just really fun to shake something sometimes. <laughs> Remember, no matter how you're feeling, your feeling probably makes a lot of sense. There's a lot going on right now. A lot of feelings all at once. Happy, excited, sad, mad, confused, scared. All of those feelings fit. The best things to do are to take some time and maybe sit in a comfy spot and play with an I spy box maybe to calm down so that you can really think about how you're feeling and why. Hi, it's me, Kylie. Welcome to my studio. I'm so excited to have you here today because we're doing something a little extra magical today. We're going to make a unicorn. <laughs> That's right, a unicorn that you can ride around and pretend that you're on the wings of the powerful unicorn soaring through the clouds. <laughs> or whatever you want to pretend. You could ride your unicorn to the store. Whatever. Let's get started. I'm going to be using foam core for the base of my unicorn, but you could use cardboard for this too. The first thing we need to do is to draw the profile of our unicorn, but we're going to leave the ears off and the horn off. Those will come later. Once we have one side drawn, we're going to cut it out and then we're going to trace that onto the other side. Cut that out too. We're going to attach these together with some cardstock so that it has some depth. These are little 
nameplates that I had left over from something else. You probably don't have these laying around, but you could just cut strips of cardstock instead. I'm going to attach them with some masking tape. Start by putting some tape on one side of your cardstock. Now, just attach that to one piece of your unicorn, running the tape right along the edge. Fold it over. Take the next piece of your unicorn and attach it right like this on this side. Do you see how that's starting to give it some form? Now I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around the edge except for the bottom where I'm gonna do something special. There you go. Now, before we put the bottom piece on, I'm going to actually stuff my paper unicorn head with old plastic bags that will help hold its shape so that if it gets squashed, we don't crack this. Now that our unicorn head is stuffed, it's time to make the bottom plate. I'm going to make this out of foam core. If you have cardboard, this is another great place to do it. I'm gonna use something a little bit stronger for this because this is where the stick is gonna go in so that we can ride this unicorn around and we want it to hold and not rip. So you're gonna wanna cut a piece that's about the exact size of your bottom opening. Then you're going to take a scissors or a box cutter, X-Acto knife, whatever, and cut an X, just like this, into the middle of your bottom plate. There we go. Now I'm gonna tape it on, just like I did with the cardstock. The base of our unicorn head is done. Now we get to put in the dowel rod. There we go. <laughs> The base of this is ready to go. You have a lot of options about what you could do here. You could cover this with paper mache. If you want a great paper mache clay recipe, check out my video, Kylie Makes a Solar System. It's so fun and you can make all sorts of things with it. Not just solar systems and unicorns, like so many things. I'm not gonna do paper mache today though. I'm going to use felt and glue. That's it. Well, a little bit of ribbon. I'm gonna start here on the neck of the unicorn. Hot glue works best if you do little puddles of it at a time, instead of long strips the whole way from where you're gonna glue. That keeps it more hot longer. I'm gonna lay it down so that it overlaps a little bit. Cool, now we have the whole outside covered and I'm gonna take these little bits and glue them down flat to the front. Now that you have the edges glued around all the way on the outside, it's time to cut the two final pieces of felt to put on this side and this side. felt to each side. It's starting to look like something. It's starting to look magical. Time for ears. To make our unicorn ears, we're gonna cut two shapes that kind of look like leaves with one flat side. I'm gonna cut another shape just like that, except a little bit smaller. Use hot glue or whatever kind of glue you're using to attach those. And then we're going to attach the ears right to either side of our unicorn's head. Now our unicorn can hear. <laughs> Time for a halter. A halter is what you use to steer your unicorn. Unless you guys have a secret language. I'm gonna use a piece of shiny ribbon for mine and just glue it on with hot glue again. Now we better add some unicorn eyes. If you'd like to make your unicorn some beautiful 
eyelashes. You can do that with another piece of felt. Next, I'm gonna make this unicorn some nostrils, two big turquoise semicircles, and two small purple semicircles. Glue those down right where the nose would be. However long you want your unicorn's hair to be, cut a string that's double that length. Then cut a lot of string that's double that length. Like a lot. Once you have the string cut, take a strip of your felt and put three big puddles of hot glue. Then put your finger in the middle of your string like this, spread it out, put it inside the felt, and then wrap your felt around it. Now you have a section of hair for your unicorn, which you can attach starting at the bottom. Keep making sections like that until the hair goes all the way up to the ears. Got all my sections of hair made. <laughs> Let's glue them on to our unicorn. When you get to the very, very top of the unicorn's head, that's when you're gonna take one last piece, but you're gonna glue it this way instead. This unicorn is starting to look so awesome. I'm so excited about it. I just, I feel like it's missing something though, you know? Hmm. It has eyes, a nose, hair, ears. What is it missing? <gasps> of course, you're brilliant. A horn. It's a unicorn after all. Silly me. I'm going to use a little bit of this shiny ribbon to make some stripes on my unicorn horn. Once your unicorn horn is done, add a little more yarn for hair inside the unicorn horn all around the edges. Now that there's hair all the way around the inside of the horn, I'm going to attach it right here. Wow, a unicorn. Look at this. Should we give this unicorn a little haircut? <laughs> now I'm going to attach one more piece of ribbon so that it looks like the piece of the bridle that you get to hold. This unicorn's looking so awesome. Last step is to decorate the stick. I think this unicorn is magical, <laughs> don't you? Let's take her for a ride. Whoa! <laughs> She's awesome, and that was so much fun. Today is going to be so much fun because for our quick craft, we're going slow. We're slowing down to make a sloth. One of my favorite creatures, and we are going to make a no-sew, hot glue only, sock and felt little stuffed animal sloth. I am so excited to show you how to do this, but first I want to go to my friend Jake, who is going to tell us some facts about one of his favorite animals, the sloth. Jake, take it away. Hi Kylie and friends, my name is Jake. I heard you were making a sloth crap today and I love sloths. This is my favorite sloth toy. His, his name is Robert. He's a Cabbage Patch doll. I also read about sloths and paint sloths. Here are three sloth facts. One, sloths are the slowest mammal. Two, sloths move so slow that they grow allergy on them. Three, sloths spend 70% of their time sleeping. Well, Kylie, I can't wait to make this craft with you. Bye. Jake, thank you so much. I learned some amazing facts about sloths. And now we're gonna make one. What you need for this project are 
six socks. They don't have to match, and they don't have to be any special kind of sock, though these long socks that I bought in the men's department do seem to work very well. I'm using some felt to make the face and claws on my sloth, but this is totally optional. I'm also using some googly eyes, we love googly eyes, and just a little, 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 little bit of fabric paint. All right, let's get started. Our first sock is going to be the sloth's body, and we're actually going to start with his hips and his back leg. Lay one sock nice and flat. Do you see this end seam down here? Right under that, we're gonna make two small cuts. This is where the bottom legs of our sloth are going to go. So I just made them right here. Now we're gonna make the legs. Take one pair of socks, so two socks, and tie a knot with the whole foot part. So from toe to heel, you're gonna tie a big knot. Great. Now, you're going to put this whole thing inside of the sock that we cut the holes in. And then these parts, which will become the bottom legs, are gonna go out through the holes that we cut. Check it out. One leg. All right. Now you're going to put that knot all the way at the bottom. There! Now we have the body of the sloth and the legs of the sloth. The next thing I'm going to do is just stuff the tummy of the sloth a little bit more with one more sock. Roll it up and put it in here. Now we have the body sock with part of the body and the bottom legs. We're going to put that down just for one second so that we can put together the arm socks. With one arm sock going to the left, fold the toe up to the heel. Then do the same thing, but in the opposite direction, with the other arm sock going to the right. Now put this whole pile right up against the body on the body sock. Then we're gonna tie a knot with the body sock. So the body sock is wrapping all the way around the arm socks and we're gonna pull it really tight, as tight as we can. Great. So now we have the body sock tied around both of the arms. This is the most fun part. We're gonna take the body sock, turn it inside out, and cover up that whole knot. That is what is going to make the head of our sloth. Oh, you're gonna be so cute! Now we're gonna make the paws for our sloth. So I'm gonna fold over the arm, and then I'm going to turn the very end inside out. Do you see how I included the fold? If you're a grown-up, this is a little bit like pegging your jeans, if you remember that. Not that I do. <laughs> do it one more time, and then that will stay there, kind of like a little knot, and it looks like a little paw. Repeat that on all the arms and legs. Now it's time to put on the felt decorations for our sloth. I already cut out our shapes, but I'll show you how it's gonna work. First, I cut out an oval with a little dip in it, kind of like a bean. Next, I cut out two shapes that look a little bit like commas that are going to go like this, right on the sloth's face. I cut them out of a darker brown. Then, I'm gonna put on the googly eyes. You could paint or draw these on if you didn't have googly eyes. And then I cut out some brown felt to put over the top of the googly eyes just so the sloth looks a little more tired and chilled out. Cool, I'm gonna paint on the nose and the smile. And then I did a rectangle, and then I cut little triangles into it, I made four of those, to glue inside the sloth's hands and feet. Got my hot glue all warmed up. 
you'll see that when we rolled these, it left a little pocket. That's where I'm gonna put in my felt claws. Put a little hot glue in, then just tuck your felt claw right in. Perfect. Repeat. Time for his face. fabric paint to paint the nose and a little sloppy smile. He's done! The sloth is done. Hi, buddy. <laughs> You're awesome. I hope you enjoyed making this quick craft with me today and I hope you enjoy making your own sock sloth or sock whatever. I would love to see what you come up with. If your grown-ups have Instagram or Facebook, they can follow me there. And if you want to make more art with me and see longer episodes, just search for Kylie Makes It. K-Y-L-E-E. -E. That's me. Grown-ups educators, I have a website and I have lots of resources on there for you too. Just search for KylieMakesIt.com. I'll see you next time.